Is Baby Monsters the Ahyun okay? But why is G Idol's Cloxon so controversial? New Jeans Erasure, SM's new British boy group, Jenny's smoking update, and so much more in today's episode of Totally Legit K pop news with me, Angelina. I got a couple comments on the last video saying totally legit is a stretch. I thought this was totally legit news, not you telling me you're biased. Oh, I'm sorry. Did this super fancy logo give you the wrong impression here? As much as I do try to stay professional. Professional, I am filming this in my room and I am a one-man show. I do need to delete absolutely everything after I'm done because my laptop can't handle it. <laughs> like, of course, I still put an effort into making good news videos, but like also at the same time, who said I was never going to give my opinion? <laughs> But we'll talk about that later. If you're here because you like my videos, then please keep on watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with friends you don't have. And for us, you and me, let's get into the news today. Totally legit K-pop news. <laughs> Oh. So previously we talked about Baby Monsters Ahyun, specifically the fact that she was receiving backlash for over dancing in comparison to other members. Basically, there were fan cams going viral where we could see the clear difference between her dancing and other members dancing. Now, while there were people saying like, leave her alone, she's literally just giving it her all, there's not an issue with it. There were some people saying that she needs to either tone down her dancing to match the rest of the group or the other members need to obviously their dancing just to create a more cohesive performance so here's an example we just see like super sharp moves and she was getting backlash for this saying that she was overshadowing her members however people are now thinking that she's seen the criticism and that it's been affecting her performances since for example the group recently performed in thailand ahyan in bangkok rapping she definitely saw those comments and took notes Now, this isn't necessarily related to overdancing, but she's been criticized in general for overperforming, for yelling too much, screaming too much, which if you're a rapper, we don't need to get into this right now. <laughs> Again, personal bias. Oh my God. But let's read some comments here. What did people say? Genuine question. People said her tone is annoying and she screams too much. I hope she doesn't lose her confidence because of that. God damn it. I like her screaming more, but she was so happy. Honestly, she did great. She took the criticism and improved. So I hope everyone else can see that. We'll save it for later. Now she sounds so good. Oh, I loved her performances more, to be honest. This is now just any standard K-pop performance, but she still ate. Good improvement. To all haters, I don't know what you all did, but look at Ahyun. She's like, she's not having fun in her fan meet in Bangkok. You should respect idols because she's just having fun. Keep the energy, Ahyun, fighting. More recently, people think it has been really affecting her because of a radio show performance. So in this radio show performance, she's quite clearly not as enthusiastic as the rest of the members. So here we can see you know everyone else kind of vibing along and she is quite still after the appearance video started going viral that seemingly showed i had not being as enthusiastic as normal and some moments where she seems sad or disconnected from the rest of the group in the videos netizens believed it was because i had seen the hate about her performance skills so he's in this tiktok right here the way everybody else is having fun and then there's Ahya. y'all are so sick and twisted to be happy that she noticed the hate now it does seem quite obvious that her energy is different from the rest of the members here. Here's another comparison. Other members who seem quite happy versus Ahyun, are you okay, babe? Let's read some comments. Now, people say she is lazy and wants to be a soloist. My Ahyun, I don't get it. They hated Ahyun because of her dance and voice, but I found her so amazing and talented. Should my bias be Ahyun? You know what? Jenny, Ahyun, Wanyoung, they're all my bias. The history repeats itself. The hate got to her, I fear. I'm sick of the hate. She was obviously just really excited about finally debuting. However, some people are kind of fighting back against this narrative. I'm going to talk about this once and for all. Y'all should stop analyzing. Ahyun's every behavior. These types of videos are circulating around the internet and they don't bring anything good. She's sometimes more reserved than other girls, but it doesn't mean she's always sad. In fact, I've personally seen other clips from the radio show where she's all smiling and happy. The energy, the vocal, the visual, the stage presence, and the confidence. This is what you should do, Ahyun. You should have fun on stage. You should enjoy being on stage because we'll always be here to cheer for you and support your growth as an artist. Y'all failed to see this. 
That's what I saw on TikTok. So of course, let me know what you think. Do you think that the hate really got to her? Or do you think maybe just like anyone in this world, she might have been having an off day or just an off moment, really? Because I actually saw this TikTok and I'm not too sure about the timing, but it is after all the hate that she received. <sighs> where we can clearly see that she's quote unquote over dancing, giving it her all. So I don't think the criticism is affecting her too much, or I would hope not. I hope it doesn't take away her shine. It's no surprise. I personally love her performances. I love watching her fan cams. She just, she gives me everything I want. I mean, I'm a sucker for energy when it comes to performances, and I think she has great energy. My personal thought is that like she doesn't give a sh about people saying that she's overperforming because she's still giving it her all in the forever fan cams. I think the difference can just be attributed to the fact that that's just the reality of performances and we should just embrace the differences in performances. Like, is that not artistry to like change? I'm, I'm a broken record, so we're going to move on from this conversation now. But I'm telling you, the comments are killing me when they're like, no, she took the criticism and she improved. <laughs> What? <laughs> I swear to God, K-pop stands are ruining performances day by day. The minute anyone does anything different in a performance, it's it's like, no, call the press. We need to shut this down immediately when in fact, that is the most beautiful thing about performances. When an idol, and this doesn't happen often, when an idol switches it up every performance, that's literally so amazing. But K-pop stands are so used to having like, Everything absolutely perfect, absolutely looking the same every single time. And I just don't vibe with that. I hate it. This is killing me inside. I can't. This is literally an aspect that is so refreshing about Baby Monster. The fact that they change the melody of the their vocals sometimes. The fact that they do switch it up for live performances and that we know it's live because they've changed it. I find that such a killing point for Baby Monster performances. And then we have people in the comments being like, stop <laughs> what do you mean stop it's beautiful moving on sorry but on that note let me know do you prefer over dancing ahyeon when she's giving it her all or do you want her to tone it down and if you do let me know your reasoning behind that because i know some people want like a super cohesive performance but let's just discuss it Seattle recently had their comeback with Klaxon. Now, when I heard that, I was like, oh, I thought it was a French title, like Klaxon. I mean, enough about the title, the song itself, the concept rather. No, the song and the concept has people highly divided. So let's talk about it. But first, I actually haven't seen the music video yet. So I'm going to do now a reaction for my channel members and patrons. Will I love it? Will I absolutely hate it? Speaking of idols hiding their moles until years later, I didn't know Soyeon had moles on her face. <laughs> like I knew about her shoulder mole, but I didn't know about her face moles. The first issue that people brought up was Uki's hair. As we can see, she has some braids. Now there are some people saying that it's cultural appropriation, while others aren't necessarily defending the look, but more so clarifying that they aren't box braids. So let's take a look at some comments. So here's the look in question. Hashtag tired of them. Some groups get away with too many things on this app. Then of course, some people clarifying that these are not box braids. These are just normal as braids. The quote retweets are foul. These are ugly as F though. Uki, please talk to your stylist. So you can let me know what you think about that issue specifically. The second issue was the song itself, which had a lot of people divided. And I'm not going to lie. I was seeing the song getting trashed all over the place. And all the snippets I've seen, I'm like, like I could kind of understand. But now listening to the whole song, I'm like, but it's, it's kind of really cute though. It's just, you know, the, the like the honking part that's a little bit off-putting, but <laughs> we'll save my review for another day. But let's read some comments on Reddit. Close enough. Welcome back, Teen Beach Movie. Hong Kong. As someone who loves Idol and who has been loving literally every comeback they've had up until now, I'm going to be honest and say that I'm not really vibing with this. I really like the first verse as well as the pre-chorus, but I find the chorus really underwhelming and it doesn't really go anywhere. It's not a bad song, but it's really not for me. Hopefully this song will grow on me. Cute and fun, but not one of my favorites from them. For a summer song, it doesn't feel catchy enough. Felt a little too safe. Still a catchy song though. What's more impressive is that they managed to get a Ford Raptor in the music video. Sweet song, but it lacks the G 
societal catchiness I have come to expect from them. I don't see any part really waking me up at 2 a.m. and making me want to sing it. Sure has happened with their title tracks before. What? <laughs> huh? Great rap, catchy pre-chorus, no anti-drop, an actual bridge, we won. I didn't get this one. Honestly, Hong Kong. There are some people comparing this song to Cat's Eyes debut. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, it took me forever to find it. I thought it was one of the verses. But actually, I think this part of the song sounds... Wait. I love you. I love you, baby. And if it is quite all right, I need you, baby. Frank Sinatra, goddamn. <laughs> Every time I hear it, I keep wanting to extend it into, and if it's quite all right. So what do you think? Do you think they're just similar? Or maybe it's a sample. Klaxon, J Idol credits? I love you, baby, and if it's quite all right. Written by Daily Likey Pop Time Soyon. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but one of the most controversial things about this comeback that I've been seeing absolutely everywhere is this performance video where they are dancing in swimwear. Basically underwear. Oh my god, how scandalous. There's no way 5th gen could possibly handle this. Not only that, I knew as soon as I saw the bikinis that all hell was going to break loose. But then Soyeon goes and does this. Tan Soyeon. <laughs> I can't even show this. But she's wearing a long shirt over her bikini. She lifts the shirt up and starts shaking her butt. When I tell you I was K-pop shocked, let's read some comments. Why do you keep exposing yourself? I'm also surprised by the member on the right who is wearing panties. Haven't you done this kind of choreography before? At this point, it seems to be your taste. No, but it's so funny. It's not attractive and they keep doing it. It doesn't look pretty. It's just embarrassing. They're getting more and more excessive. Seriously, it looks like underwear and it isn't even a swimsuit. Why do they wear... Why do, what? Why do they like their, this is so much, amazing. Aren't the members generally famous for their good vocals? Why are they getting more and more exposed? It's a little uncomfortable. Now it's not to say that everybody hated it. She got so much praise for that clip. Again, I was K-pop shocked. <laughs> New era of K-pop has started. Literally, my jaw dropped. Uki in the back, this was a double kill. Queen attitude. Suddenly Claxton is my favorite j Idol choreography. <laughs> she's k-pop shocked too og idol the next water bomb needs you so the question being like is this praiseworthy or is it too much here's an article that was written about it showcasing a striking level of exposure concerns were raised about the excessively revealing nature of their attire with even buttocks exposed during the video members are seen dancing while wearing bikini tops and white shirts on top with their behinds exposed crossing the line during chun soyeon's rap part particularly the camera angle captures chun soyeon lifting along to i already explained this thank you very much other members like look and mian positioned behind chun soyeon also predominantly display body parts in response both domestic and international audience expressed disapproval towards the excessive exposure of the members stating we understand this is a sexy concept but this is too much i miss the group's past the concept of the beach and swimmer is nice but the level of exposure is shocking. Well, it's K-pop shocking. Fifth gen K-pop shocking because second gen in second gen, the, of course, this would receive so much backlash. It would get banned. But they'd have done it, you know? Like Conversely, some welcomed the video commenting, they are all adults. It's summer, so they can try a sexy concept if they want to. And if it's all the lyrics of nude, it matches them. This does bring up the question of what is this new era of K-pop going to bring to us? Because we have 5th gen Dreamcore, which wouldn't dare venture into these sexy concepts. Yet, in this here 5th gen, we are seeing a lot more sexy concepts than we ever have within the past few years. Which is shocking to a lot of people, but if we look back to 2nd gen, it was wild. <laughs> 
I always say this, it's a culture shock looking back to second gen K-pop music videos because they're raunchy, they're explicit. And then you get used to fifth gen K-pop and it's so pure and <laughs> angelic. So it's shocking to look back at second gen K-pop concepts and what they got away with, though a lot of them didn't get away with it. There was a lot of hate, a lot of double standards, a lot of music videos getting banned. Rania's Dr. Feel Good, Hyuna's Bubble Pop. But now within fifth gen, we have j Idol's Klaxon, Stick of, Sticky of Life, Kiss of Life's Sticky, Signature's new beach themed song as well. So people are like, K-pop is pushing its limits. K-pop already pushed its limits. So it's kind of like they're just pushing them again. But in terms of double standards, I came across this tweet. It says, Pego makes a buzz with his toned body at water bomb. And then contrasted with, Jiedo becomes a hot topic for excessive exposure in Korea. So kind of showcasing the double standards. So if we are going to bring back sexy concepts for groups in K-pop, the double standards are coming back too. Isn't of M Black actually addressed this a long time ago that if he takes off his shirt in a performance, it's sexy. But if Hyuna shows a bit of skin, she's called cheap. So with all that said, of course, I would love to know your thoughts. If you think K-pop is going to bring back the scandalous nature of second gen, if you think that's a good thing or a bad thing, so many idols coming forward after the fact saying they weren't comfortable with those concepts. Not only that, but the backlash that those concepts received. I feel like there's just so much to discuss surrounding this. So let me know in the comments. Blackpink's Jenny was recently caught smoking indoors in a now deleted vlog clip. And there was so much speculation about whether or not she was actually doing what people thought she was doing. People saying it's a stress diffuser. People saying it's vitamin, it's a B12 diffuser. I don't even know. Whatever company does the stress diffuser, oh my God, they probably sold out by now. But actually her company has since released an apology for this. So let's read what Odd Atelier had to say. Hello, this is OA Entertainment. We sincerely apologize to everyone who felt uncomfortable with Jenny's actions in the content released on July 2nd. Jenny acknowledges and deeply regrets her mistake of vaping indoors and causing inconvenience to the staff. Jenny has personally apologized to all the staff on site who may have been affected. We apologize to her fans who have been disappointed through this incident. We hope to prevent this from reoccurring in the future. Thank you. So it is really interesting because anytime something like this happens, fans, even though they don't know, will come up with all types of experiences excuses and like that is their truth to them it was a vitamin diffuser i saw this one comment like no hate to this one comment but someone was like saying the most ridiculous things about someone was like you guys need to understand that like it's actually just water like you <laughs> it doesn't even produce smoke you guys are misunderstanding like it's super safe i was just like what are they teaching you in school like <laughs> anyways here are some comments in response to her state the fact that she got shielded on with being a diffuser was the funniest. The fact that she's not apologizing directly is legendary. At this rate, did she really write this apology? It's even more shocking that she only realized how wrong she was after it became this controversial. This is a power trip. Do you think her image was clean to start with? It suits her. Her image is a mess. And Jenny isn't going to apologize. So she did smoke indoors in the end. She was getting shielded with an effing diffuser. And this is why it's so nice being a celebrity. Okay, okay. <laughs> Here's some more comments. Fans saying it was a diffuser in the first place was funny. And show how far they would go to protect their idol's image. PR agencies could learn from them. Secondly, the staff writing this apology after she blew smoke on another staff makes this hilarious. There were 16,000 likes on a post saying it was a vitamin B diffuser. YG would probably have ignored all this and the diffuser story would have been the fan forced narrative she probably outsources her video editing which is why they didn't know to be super careful she she should give some of her super fans the privilege of proof watching before vlogs go live they would love it and they wouldn't let anything slip through the net that is true i feel like yg wouldn't have said a word wouldn't have addressed it but i guess that's the point of them joining starting their own agencies rather they want to be able to address stuff like this if they need to. Maybe they were frustrated with the fact that YG never addressed anything, but sometimes not addressing things is the best thing. But maybe it was good that she addressed it? I don't know, let me know what you think. Do you think the YG method of never addressing is the best? Or do you appreciate the fact that her company addressed this? But that's not it for poor Jenny, who's 
seems to have been reported to the Korean embassy in Italy. Not like through any official means, if that makes sense, but a netizen reported her, allegedly. On July 9th, My Daily reported that Jenny had been reported to the Korean embassy in Italy. The report to the embassy stems from the idol smoking indoors while filming in Italy. So this netizen apparently asked for an investigation. In terms of like the other smoking indoors controversies that we've seen, this isn't unnatural, right? Like someone's gonna report you. Didn't this happen to Exo's Dio as well? Someone was like, investigate this and then he got a fine. Let's read some comments about this. The way she made no feedback really shows her conceit. It's true that it was problematic, but reporting this to the embassy was too much. What too much? She shouldn't have smoked indoors in the first place. So it's illegal to smoke indoors in Italy too, huh? What too much? What is too much is that she's smoking indoors. While yesterday netizens were saying how they didn't care overseas, and I just thought, I see, but turns out it was illegal too. Italy's law is stricter than Korea's. We need people who report illegal acts like these for crimes to go down though. As someone said that Italy was okay with it, it was illegal after all. There are so many kids making fun of the report. If it's illegal, she should pay a fine like all of us would have to, but I must say for some random Korean to go out of their way to contact the Korean embassy in Italy, this is peak hater of levels I haven't seen in a while. Where is this energy from stands on actual criminals though? Consider seeking help if fan wars is your entire personality. It's safe to say that not only has this story become huge, but it sparked a huge conversation regarding whether or not Jenny is receiving too much backlash for this or maybe she's not receiving enough backlash for this in comparison to others with some people saying that people are being too lenient with this then we have this other post did all the male idols who smoked indoors write an apology male idols also face criticism when caught smoking indoors that's why they end up paying fines and issuing apologies, right? Honestly, it's fair to file a complaint, but it often feels like the intent is more about bringing them down. Like the title of the post insinuates, I'm going to ruin you. It makes me wonder if it's really necessary to go that far. No, but they wrote an apology though. There are many comments saying that male idols have written apology letters, even aside from these ones, so I wondered if I just didn't remember them. I can think of two male idols right now who were fined after someone reported them and their agency issued an apology through the news, but have any male idols actually personally posted an apology well does that make sense though because it's jenny's company who did the anyways but it doesn't end there because it seems a staff member has come out to clarify the situation allegedly according to an article from sports Tosun, a staff who had been on site smoke up about the matter what <laughs> smoke up about the matter so they stepped up anonymously claiming that the place in the video was a waiting area for the Jacques Mu show and it was not a smoking prohibited area indoors. After asking if she could smoke, she immediately opened the window next to her and smoked like that. So apparently after what we saw in the clip, she kept apologizing even after the show ended and the staff involved also said that it was fine because they were also smokers. Although it is a problem that the smoke brushed by the top of the staff's head, I think it's not right for her past actions to be mentioned together as part of an attitude controversy controversy with this issue. As her in real life friend, I'm leaving a comment as I feel upset that she is being misunderstood like this. So past issues being brought up there was a parking controversy that was resurfaced in light of this she apparently illegally parked in front of a tribe restaurant so usually people will cook the meals themselves at this restaurant but it seems she wanted to order it to go at that time the owner of the restaurant made an appearance on sbs power fm a van pulled up to our restaurant at around 11 p.m i told them that if they parked there they could get a ticket and i told them to use a valet but someone who looked like a manager said it's okay if we get a ticket it's the first First time I heard anyone say something like that. Then two stylists and two managers came out of the car. They asked if the food could be prepared to go. It turns out it was a celebrity. I prepared the food and wondered who it was. It was Blackpink's Jenny who came, so I thought it was okay for someone like her to do that. So that's just a story that's been resurfacing. I don't personally know if it's true, but this got so big that Billboard tweeted the following. Billboard is looking at what the women of Blackpink are up to, from Lisa's upcoming headline performance at Global Citizen Festival to Jenny's apology for vaping indoors. <laughs> this safe to say this did not go over too well. That headline was unnecessary. The fact that this is coming from a professional's I expected better than this all-time low headline. But that's our update on this story as of now. And of course, let me know what you think in the comments. 
I'm sure you guys have heard of Hybe's collaboration with the Grammy Museum titled Hybe, We Believe in Music, a Grammy Museum exhibit, with the CEO of the museum saying, Hybe and their artists represent the present and future of the global music landscape, and our goal with this exhibit is to deepen the appreciation and respect for its creators and performers. Hybe has contributed to creating a playground of innovation that inspires fandoms and transcends age, gender, geography, and beyond. The Grammy Museum is thrilled to provide a space where fans can express their love for k-pop and feel closer to their favorite idols so as we see here we have a bunch of hype groups zico bts 17 tomorrow by together from miss nine and hype and la seraphim and team boy next door to us i was gonna say trigger warnings eyelet and cat's eye but who is missing in this picture here new jeans and people were initially super disappointed with this my brother in christ the fact that this is the first time that a company has successful worldwide girl group lmao they really don't deserve my genies <laughs> That's cute. Hashtag free new jeans. We thought you didn't want Hive associated with new jeans. Oh, you're right. The point here is how Hive has placed itself in the media as the savior of new jeans to the point of treating the girls' parents as villains when we all know that's not the case. Is my house falling apart? Did you hear that? Now, amidst all of this, Pang Shi Huk, my twin, who was previously accused of ignoring New Jeans members in the high building, like not even greeting them, like ignoring their greetings, is once again under fire for clips of him with an hypen. Now, when I originally read this, Pang Shi Huk once again comes under fire for his treatment towards an hypen. I was like, oh, he's mistreating an hypen? Um, but that wasn't it. The clips of him with Enhypen are actually really nice and that's what people are upset about because he's proven time and time again that he can be really nice to everyone around him but when it comes to new jeans that doesn't seem to be the case so there was a lot of backlash surrounding this people saying it's new jeans erasure however hive revealed to sports kyungyang the option of participation in this exhibit was decided upon by the label's choice so basically implying or basically saying that adore didn't want to participate in this so with all that said again what do you think of this? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so let's move on to our K-pop discussion segment. So I found this on Reddit. Mildly, mildly infuriating K-pop things. I thought this could be interesting to talk about. So here's this person's mild, mildly, I can't say that very well, mildly infuriating K-pop things. For the more popular groups, the first comments you'll see getting the most likes on every newly uploaded music video will never not be these two. How many international fans are here to support blank? Vocals, 100%. Visuals, 100%. All the K-pop commentary YouTubers that use AI-generated voices, I can never take their opinion seriously no matter how good the points they might be making. If I hear them spoken from those atrocious robot voices, I can't super relate to this because I will get stuck on TikTok and I know it's bad, but I'll be watching like movie summaries and it's clearly like so badly written. I think it's like translated or something. Thing, and they're just explaining movies so badly and I can't get enough of it. Eddie already being a cool ass name that perfectly matches Espa's vibe only to be given the stage name Giselle. <laughs> I remember when Espa first debuted and I was introducing the members from the information that we had and I was like oh and this member's name is Ari and as soon as I uploaded that video it was revealed that she was going to go by Giselle. How hard it is to type G idol properly. It's been years and I still struggle and could never get it right in one go without having to look it up. So I don't have to look it up, I have it down pat. The amount of titles I've put G-Idol in, I have it down pat, but I do have to admit that it's a little annoying. And then this fifth one, I hate anything AI generated in general with a passion, but one thing I can't stand recently are stands ruining perfect photos of idols by editing them th by editing them through those AI image enhancing apps to make them look more HD. <laughs> I'm so guilty of this like girl there's nothing HD about that please if anything they just lose all their skin texture and get weird AF non-human looking eyelids the eyelid thing is so real I actually put every single thumbnail through Rimini. So I get the same treatment, <laughs> but it has an issue with eyelids, I'm not gonna lie. So do I have any mildly annoying K-pop things? When someone's clearly lip syncing and all the comments are praising the live vocals and stability. I can't think of any, but let's read some of the comments. Being shamed by not caring about streaming, not normal streaming, but literally playing in every device all the time. I don't have enough time, but I will support as much as I can. I'm tooting my old horn here, but when someone talks old school and it's 
2019-2020 or even early third gen like EXO or EXID or Mamamoo. Yes, they've been around for a while, but when I say old school, the least I expect is second gen stuff from before 2013. Another mildly annoying thing is when like someone will like go like on and on about like, oh, they're probably joking about that at their dorms to get like... <laughs> It's like the in real time fan fiction or something. Oh, so and so are joking about this at their dorms right now. I bet they had a good laugh about that. K-pop react channels that there's only a few that I tolerate. A lot of them just over exaggerate their reactions to get K-pop stands to support them. I also always find some of these reaction vid titles so funny. They be like, gynecologist reacts to what is love by twice. Afro Italian Chinese Mexican Indian French Russian man reacts to OMG by New Jeans or 78 year conservative conservative old british grandma reacts to 11 by i <laughs> like what does any of that have to do with the video you're reacting to <laughs> that's so funny let me know in the comments your mildly annoying things in k-pop Let's move on to K-pop shenanigans, which basically, which are basically fun little things that have happened in K-pop recently and or quick news. So this model is going viral because she looks like Hong Jung. <laughs> I think this is from, yes, Hybe merch. Okay, but why does this model literally look like a Hong Jung in girl mode? So when I first saw this picture, I was like, I don't know. Eh. Then I saw it. This is where I saw it. I can see it. And then we have a comparison here. We got a new look at 5050, the new 5050. So I guess they're backs, right? So we all know Kina stayed with 5050 or she returned to 5050. And for whatever reason, they're going to be a five member girl group now. So we got to see their backs. Here it is. Hybe is designing a light stick for Team Korea for the Olympics. This is apparently what it's going to look like. What do you think? The staff no the lineup of road to kingdom has been announced so we have the new six tnx the crew one what what does that mean the crew one atbo and just b or, like they're making up their own group eight turn one s unite gravity and tempest and then sm are revealing their first british boy group in a bbc documentary series so we've been hearing so for so long now we've been hearing about SM's gonna have a British boy group and there's been so many memes surrounding it. It's been a meme. It's been a whole meme. But that was years ago. I remember talking about this years ago and I guess it's finally coming to fruition here. It will air this summer. This unique acquisition will showcase a sense of exactly what it takes to make it in the world of K-pop. Witnessing the band come together and be put through their places Paces promises to be a very exciting prospect for audiences. So through A2K, we got to see an American girl group being made. And then through the Dream Academy, we got to see a global girl group being made. And now we'll get to see a British boy group being made. Allegedly, again, it's been years that we've been talking about this, that they've been teasing this. Okay, so let me check if I have a K-pop song of the day. I'm not sure. I don't I don't have a K-pop song of the day. I actually did have a K-pop dream this morning, but it's so vague. I'll tell you a little bit of it because it was so vague. I was just fighting with my cousin and then I got left behind. And then my cousin and her crew got picked up by a truck or something, but it turns out it wasn't her. It was actually La Seraphim. And then La Seraphim got dropped off in front of me and I was like, oh, I'm gonna like take pictures and see exactly who betrayed me, but it was a seraphim. <gasps> what could this mean? <laughs> so that is basically it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with the friends you don't have. These are the lovely individuals who help support me on a monthly basis. It means the world to me. Thank you so much. As for me, I'm going to get going. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Uh-oh. Uh-oh.